everyone and thanks for joining us. It's a brand new power structure at the Minnesota State Capitol. In fact, Minnesota is the only state in the nation with a divided legislature. DFLers are now in control of the House after picking up 18 seats in the last fall's election. They hold a 75 to 59 seat majority. The Republicans, meanwhile, currently hold a narrow two seat majority in the Senate. Delane Cleveland has more now on the new session. The sound of a gavel marks the official start of the 2019 legislative session. It becomes my duty as your Secretary of State to call the members of the Minnesota House of Representatives to order. Yet whether it was your sixth year in office, like Democratic Representative Mike Freiberg of Golden Valley. It's a lot of fun. It's It kind of reminds you what an honor it is to serve in this office. Or your first day in office, like Republican Representative Kristen Robbins of Maple Grove. You know, I'm really excited and humbled overwhelmed, you know, with the honor of serving in this position. Clerk pro tempore will call the roll. It's an occasion where members from both parties can enjoy the celebration and paint a positive picture of what lies ahead. You know, we all went on a retreat and got to know each other this morning. You know, I, I walked in with a few of my Democrat freshman friends and I, I feel like we developed good relationships and we'll work hard to work together. Robin says that's especially true for issues related to transportation and education, but there are issues where she won't budge. In general, I'm a fiscal conservative and with a $1.5 billion surplus, I don't believe we need tax increases. So I will be trying to hold the line on any effort to expand government or increase taxes. For Representative Freiberg, this session marks a new era where his party controls both the House and the governor's office. But with the Senate still in Republican control, both sides will have to find common ground. And the early signs, I would say, are positive. I mean, you know, it's I'm sure there will be points of disagreement. I'm sure they'll probably get heated at times. But at least at this time, um, Speaker Hortman, Senate Majority Leader Gazelka have indicated a willingness to work together. Keel present. The parties will have until May 20 to put together a nearly $50 billion two-year budget that funds education, health care, and public safety. Exactly how they'll pay for all of it is the big question. Oh, man. One thing they do know is that the Northwest Metro has a number of representatives among House leadership in charge of making it happen. You know, I'm really optimistic we will be able to work together. Well, Mike Freiberg said some of the things to keep an eye on this session will be finding a dedicated source of revenue to pay for roads, bridges, and transit. And with the Affordable Care Act under threat at the federal level, he expects the state to step in to help protect people with pre-existing conditions and helping young people stay on their parents' insurance. So, uh, Shannon? All right, thank you, Delane. With DFLers in control of the House and Republicans in charge of the Senate, both parties will have to find common ground on key issues. Tops on the list is building a budget. State budget officials recently estimated that the state will have a one and a half billion dollar surplus. However, that could change and lawmakers will get an updated forecast in February. Another issue is health care costs. DFLers are getting behind a plan to expand Minnesota care to all Minnesotans. The state health care program is currently reserved for people with lower incomes. And education funding is another top issue. DFLers have pitched a plan for universal pre-K. Republicans say universal pre-K would destroy the private daycare system.